welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 253. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And yes, if you would like to follow me on social media, I am most active on Instagram. I am at Volunvine there. And you can follow me on Ravelry. I'm Volunvine there as well. And show notes for this episode and every other episode can be found over at www.yarngasmpodcast.com. And if you have not already joined the Yarngasm Ravelry group, I highly recommend you do because it is the place to partake in all of our knit-alongs, join the chatter, and be inspired by other people watching the podcast. I highly recommend that you hop on over there and check it out. And yes, I guess that is it for the administrati part of things. Uh, but I took a break last week. I took a knitcation, if you will. I, I it was much needed after, especially after Rhinebeck and prepping for Indian Tangled. I did take that Monday off the weekend, the, the week after that weekend, but honestly, what was I thinking? It was not, it was definitely not enough time off. So I was kind of hoping to take this week off, but I really needed it last week. So I, you know, listen to your body. <laughs> and uh, you know, I just took last week off and you guys, I'm ready to dive back into things. I'll talk more about it throughout the episode, but I am so pumped to just get back to dying, get back to work because I kid you not, I literally sat on my tuchus the entire week knitting in front of the computer, watching podcasts and working on my continental knitting and I have the sore back to prove it. My back is in pain because I did not get up enough, I did not walk around and I will be totally honest, I'm so used to moving around and doing things and I literally, I rarely got up to do anything, which is not a good idea. I don't recommend it because by the end of the week, I kind of felt gross. Not in, in the sense like, oh my God, I need to take a shower kind of gross, but gross in the sense that like, I have not been moving. I need to move around and do things physically. And yeah, so I, I am ready to get back to the dye pots and start, you know, lifting things, if you will. Um, although I do think it's time for me to get a massage because my back is crying. Anyway, uh, so other than that, I will talk more about what I did on my knitcation throughout the episode. Uh, but otherwise, other announcements that I have to chat about with you. The big one, the very big one, I didn't, I didn't announce this on social media or anything. I didn't talk about it. I may have touched on it last episode, but you guys, Edinburgh Yarn Festival has been booked. I, I booked my flight, I booked my hotel, I'm going to EYF 2018, and I am so excited. This time, unfortunately, Dennis will be sitting this one out. He decided that he does not want to go, and I don't blame him at all. While I really enjoyed having Dennis come along for the last EYF, I'm kind of excited to be off on my own and being able to do all the yarny things without feeling bad about having Dennis ha tag along and you know well he did enjoy himself while I enjoyed having Dennis along with me we got to do so many awesome touristy things together I feel like he wasn't really into the, the yarny things <laughs> as much so um, I don't blame him for wanting to sit this one out uh, and this time around I am I'm gonna do all the yarny things or as much yarny things as I possibly can and I'm kind of looking at it as a little vacation for myself uh, and I will say I've never been abroad on my own, let alone fly on a plane on my own. So I'm kind of, I'm not, I'm not nervous or anything, but I'm excited, excited, nervous kind of, because I've never done any of that on my own. So I'm, I'm definitely very excited to be doing something solo, you know, tra some solo travel. Uh, and yeah, so that'll be a lot of fun and exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. But I keep telling myself that friends, nitty friends are on the other side of the pond. They're waiting. So I have that to look forward to. Um, but yeah, I am just super excited to meet up with people who I met last last Edinburgh Yarn Festival and people who I have yet to meet. Uh, you know, some people that didn't go last year said that they were going this year, so <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm sure I'll, I'll keep you up to date with more developments as far as, you know, what events I'm going to be attending and whatnot. Uh, podcaster meetup, yes, that is happening. Uh, and yeah, so anyway, yay, EYF 2018. 
very, 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 very excited. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into what I've been making this week. And can we talk about my new, my new, um, mug? <laughs> this is really ridiculous, but I saw it and I could not, could not resist. It says, all I want to do is knit, watch my shows, and drink wine. I love my wine, I love my shows, and I love my knitting, so yeah. There's no wine in here, there, right now, at least. <laughs> there, there's tea. I'm currently drinking some Tecana, uh, caramel apple pie, which Becky Sorensen of the Stringing It Together podcast is so wonderfully gifted me when she, lost, when she was lost in New York City, and this tea is amazing. I highly recommend it. If you can get your mitts on it, caramel apple pie, it really does taste like caramel apple pie. That, with just a little hint, I put a little bit of Splenda in it, and oh my gosh, you guys, but I'm really loving my new mug right now. I got it on Amazon if, you're cur if you are curious. So yeah, that's, that's where I got it if you would like a mug like this of your own. So, okay, um, I have some finished objects. So that is very rare on the podcast because especially this past week, because I have casted on all the things. It's ridiculous. Um, I've been trying to be good about not casting on anything because I have my Lopa sweater that I'm trying to finish. I have, what else am I knitting that I need to finish? I have so many things that I need to finish. I have a shawl design that I'm trying to finish. It's a little crazy, but I, I cast on all the things this past week, which I will talk about in a bit, but I do have some finished objects to show for. Uh, and I guess we'll talk about the most mundane thing, but not so mundane thing. I have a finished pair of socks and these are my trekking socks, which have accumulated some of my hair that has shed on it um but yeah this is yarn that i purchased in at pearl uh p-town pearl in provincetown massachusetts on cape cod and yeah they are done i was ready to have these cast off because as you can see it's a solid it's not a solid color it's more of like a marled um it feels very sheepy very rustic and it's kind of like regia yarn where it feels very rustic very wooly and uh durable and that's exactly what these are however because it's like a solid color i was kind of ready to be done with them whereas like hand dyed yarn it's more exciting for me to knit with because i'm always excited to see how the speckles and the variegateds are going to knit up it's like a surprise party on my needles but um yeah, I was kind of ready to be done with these, but uh, yay, they are done. And it's a basic plain vanilla sock, pl vanilla as in just a plain basic sock, nothing fancy going on, uh, cuff, cuff down, uh, two by two ribbing, fish lips kiss heel, and just a Kitchener grafted toe. And yeah, I think these, I believe these are pair seven for my box of socks, a year long knit along that I am hosting <laughs> that I am way behind on. But uh, yeah, it we have less than a month, we're about like a month and a half away from, from the end of box of socks 2017. It's crazy, I can't believe it. This year totally flew by. Uh, and some of you have been wondering, you've been asking me if there's going to be a box of socks 2018. Yes, yes there will. I feel like this is going to become a year, a yearly tradition, uh, just because it's, socks are fun. I, I consider myself a sock knitter, even though my sock mojo this year has kind of taken the back seat, but I will always love knitting socks. They are, they are my go-to project. They are what I knit on when I hang out with friends. They are just, it's a pattern that I have memorized that if I have any ball of yarn, I can just whip up a pair of socks I love knitting socks, so uh, for that, yeah, there, there will be a there will be a box of socks 2018 uh, coming. So very excited, uh, and if you would like to enter to win giveaway prizes, uh, hop on over to again the Yarn Gasm Ravelry group. Check out the guidelines; all that information is right there. But yeah, the the knit along is coming to a close uh, January 1st, 2018. So be sure to get your box of socks entries in. Yeah, and that's all I want to say about that. Um, yeah, so yay, these are done, very excited. Uh, the next finished uh, finished object that I have are my silver mittens. They are done. Hey guys, I love these so much. I cannot tell you. Um, they were so quick to whip up. This is a pattern by Ellie, uh, who is Skein Deer Knits. She has a Skein Deer Knits podcast, and she's Skein Deer on Ravelry, and she is 
an amazing Selbu Mitten knitwear designer. She does a lot of color work, that's her jam. She's actually in town this week. We hung out yesterday. I will talk more about that in the blather segment, but she's in town, I'm so excited. Um, so I got to show her these yesterday, but this is her, yeah, it, they're just called Selbu Mittens. And this is not part of her Selbu Mitten Club, uh, which has come to an end, I believe. There are four mittens in the in the club, and I think you know if you still you can still opt into uh, joining the club, but I believe it's come to an end. So all all the patterns are available, and you know you can see what they look like. Um, and yeah, let me let me talk about the yarn. The yarn is Valone Vine Yarns, my hand dyed yarn in the Smitten DK base. And the colorways that I used are Moon Custer, which is this um, variegated brown colorway, and then the contrasting colorway is Spinderella. And both of these are Halloween colorways. I don't know if you can, yeah. So both of these are Halloween colorways. Moon Custer was last year's Halloween colorway, and uh, Spinderella was this year's Halloween colorway. And I really like the way that hand dyed yarn, especially speckled yarn, um, knits up with color work. It just has this really cool like stained glass effect. So I, I, I yeah, I I love I love I love knitting. I love knitting color work mittens with hand dyed yarn. Highly recommend it if you want like a really cool, interesting kind of like watercolor or ecat effect, if you will. So really awesome pattern. Can totally see knitting another pair of these and I'm trying to think what else. Super soft, super fluffy, super warm. Um, and I'm definitely gonna knit another pair or one of her Selbu patterns uh, using, I have some DK, what is it, blacker yarns. So I'm gonna knit up a pair of using that and I, I'll, I'll talk more about that in stash enhancements. But anyway, yay, they're done. It was like while knitting these that I learned how, to, or I taught myself how to knit holding two strands of yarn on my left hand, like knitting continental, but um, picking off the colorways as I need them, knitting from the chart. So I just came out with a, tutor a video tutorial for that. So if you are curious how I knit, um, how, I have, how I have started knitting color work, uh, definitely check out that tutorial. I got a lot of great feedback on it. So thank you so much to everybody for all the great feedback. Um, again, I am by no means a color work expert. This is just how I, knit color work or have started knitting color work and I found it super helpful and efficient for me. Uh, so, you know, I thought I would share that knowledge with you. So definitely check it out. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you think. Um, and I hope it helps, but yay, Selby Mittens. My hands will be warm for the winter. I've already started wearing these because the weather has dropped, the, the, the temperatures have started to drop significantly. So these could not have been finished at a better time. So, Yes, okay, so that is it for finished objects. I am gonna move along to whips, whips and new cast-ons. Okay, so my Damiaka Lopa uh, cardigan, uh, a wonderful pattern by Pinay Guri. Uh, I had to take a break from that. I sat down during my knitcation to work on it, and as I was knitting it on it, I ran out of the light gray colorway to knit all the uh, little flea, flea ticks throughout the pattern. So I'm like, great, finally got my mojo back to start working on it and I run out of yarn. So I had a panic order more Jameson and it arrived recently so I can get back to it. So next week you will see some progress. I promise you will see some progress on this on this cardigan because I want to finish it. I keep saying that every episode. I want to have it finished. Um, and I saw Ellie's yesterday. She showed it to me in person and it is, and it is beautiful. So if that is not encouragement enough to put pedal to the metal and finish it, I don't know what is. So more on my Demiaka Lopa next week. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, as I mentioned, I cast on a couple projects because I am on a total color work kick. Um, and as I mentioned, I really like the effect of hand dyed yarn with color work. I decided to finally bite the bullet. I put together some yarn and I was like, oh my gosh, this, this would make an amazing Sunset Highway pullover by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, and that is her name. Yeah, Caitlin Hunter, I got that right. <laughs> but I am loving this pattern so much. You guys, yeah, it's mauve, it's mauve. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's no there's no stopping me, you guys. I, I am obsessed with this colorway. I, I, I can't explain it. I don't know why, I just, it makes my heart sing so much. 
I'm just eventually when I record this podcast, I'm just gonna blend into the background. <laughs> you're not gonna see me, you're just gonna see a head floating. It's because I'm just covered in mauve and I don't know. I can't describe it. But anyway, I'm knitting a, uh, this is the Sunset Highway Pullover, a wonderful pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And I just watched a really great interview with her on the Fruity Knitting Podcast um, with Andrew and Andrea. They interviewed her and she is just so lovely. Uh, just like her aesthetic and her personality and yeah it just makes me like want to knit all of her patterns because i love where she's coming from with all of her ideas and yeah just i'm so happy i cast this on because i'm having so much fun with it um so here it is uh, i did a german twisted I, i'm sorry yeah i did a german twisted cast on for the neckline which i love i'm a little i don't i'm using the i i will be totally transparent here i did not knit i didn't knit a gauge swatch for this at all but looking at the pattern it looks like it's supposed to be loose fitting and relaxed and so i'm not i'm not concerned with gauge at all other than i would like it to fit me um and the the sample in the photo on the pattern shows the neckline where it's super drapey super dipped and everything however this one is knitting up not so drapey and super dippy is that a term super dippy neckline Anyway, um, it still fits over my head, so I'm not complaining. And I don't, I, I will be totally honest, I'm not a fan of the super dippy neckline. Uh, but, gosh, that's gonna be the name of this episode, super dippy. Anyway, um, but yeah, I do like kind of a crew neck. And I know once, once I block it, it's going to get wider. So, um, and there are short rows in here. But uh, yeah, I'm, it, it's, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And I should probably start talking about what kind of yarn I'm using. Uh, this is not my hand dyed yarn for once. Uh, I went stash diving and picked out some colors that spoke to me. And this is yarn, uh, this mauve color right here is Asylum Fibers on her solitary base, which is a merino, superwash merino single. And it's her house coat colorway. And I saw this at Indian Tangled and I'm like, you're coming home with me. It just, yeah. There was no question, it came home with me. Uh, and then this color right here is Machete Shop uh, in Aqua Aura, and her, uh, also in her sing Merino Singles base. And then I just introduced um, Woolen Boon down here in her Shuffle Truffle, um, Shuffle Truffle colorway. And I am loving the, again, like I'm loving the effect. It almost reminds me of, um, Ecat, I K A T. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this, but it was like a huge interior design trend. Like you would go into Target or Walmart or any of these, like even like a high end store, but you would see like this kind of. Um, I almost want to call it like. I'm totally gonna get this wrong, but it's very like watercolory. Uh, it's woven, but all the lines are just kind of blended into one another. I'll try and post a photo of an example of what I'm talking about, but it definitely reminds me of that. Um, well, I'm not a huge fan of that pattern in general. I would never decorate my house in it, but for some reason I like the way it looks in a sweater or a garment. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying the way this is progressing. Um, but here's the cake of Asylum Fibers. And then let me see, here is Aqua Aura in Machete Shop. Just this really beautiful teal rainbow it's like rainbow sprinkles over teal it's absolutely beautiful and truffle shuffle by woolen boon and i think this is going to go the whole body is going to be my hand dyed yarn uh full and yarns in the dirty on purpose colorway sorry guys <laughs> i don't remember my own colorways but um yeah dirty on purpose and i just let me see if i can hold this up I think it'll pick up really well with the truffle shuffle and just add like a whole neutral effect because it's like the yoke is going to be pretty loud. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be, it's going to be a busy, a very loud and bright kind of uh, yoke, but the rest of the body is just going to be like this nice neutral brown to kind of tone it down a bit. So um, yeah, a little bit out of my comfort zone uh, with the brights and the multicolored theme going on, but I feel like the adding, throwing a neutral in there will kind of neutralize the overall effect. So, uh, yeah, really having fun with that. And that is living in my, my skull bag, skull project bag, which seems to go with a lot of projects right now. Um, yay. So 
there's that. And then, uh, what else have I been working on? Uh, yes, so as I mentioned, I'm still on a color work kick, so I decided to cast on a Bustabini, a pattern by Gudrun Johnston, uh, and she, it's a free pattern, you can, you know, it, it's, there's no charge for it, and it's a very simple, um, it's almost, I think this is going to be a little slouchy, but I really just wanted to, like, I saw the pattern, I was looking for a color work pattern for my Tuku wool, which I purchased at uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year, and, or I'm sorry, no, this year, feels like last year, but it's this year. Um, and I, Tuku wool, which is a Finnish uh, wool, and it's absolutely beautiful, you guys. This is how far I am with it. And yeah, there's this move. Told you. I'm gonna start blending into the wall because I'm gonna be covered in move. So yeah, the, you cast. I cast on with like this move color, and then I'm using this chocolate brown and this lighter chocolate brown, and then um, or a tan, I should say, and then of course move. So um, and the yarn itself feels pretty rustic in the cake. So this is the move, and then this is the dark chocolate brown, and what did I do? Oh, I didn't bring the lighter one. It's upstairs, but. Um, it feels very rustic and wooly in the cake, but once it's knit up, it just, it blooms. Like even as you're knitting with it, it just has like this really soft buttery quality to it. And I can only imagine once I block it, excuse me, it's just gonna bloom even more and just soften up even more. And oh, it's gonna be really, really nice to wear. And yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm super excited about it. Uh, originally I cast this hat on for Dennis. I was going to use the lighter, um, what is it, the the lighter uh, tan color with an even lighter color, but it, it was just not enough contrast, so <laughs> I had already caked up the yarn and I didn't want it to languish in my stash, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to cast on a Bustabini for me, and whatever yarn that I have left over, I will probably knit another one for him. So yeah, that's where I am with that, and let me see, I have a little Sucre Sucre. <laughs> Uh, s'mores donut project keeper on here, which I love it just yeah Like these colorways together just remind me of dessert like a raspberry chocolate Something and I don't know because it was a chocolate s'mores donut. I'm like it's, it makes sense It makes sense to have on the needles and I'm using Lika, um 16 I got these yesterday from do uh, I'll talk more about that in stash enhancement, but um I picked up some 16 inch uh, fixed circulars uh, in US size four, 3.5 millimeter needles. And I have I have the um, interchangeable set and it comes with a 16 inch cable. However, I think the, the joins add a little extra length to the, uh, to the cable. So it's a lot longer cable than, um, than I would like for knitting hats. And this is a lot shorter, so it works perfectly for hats. I don't have to worry about constantly shuffling my stitches and, um, you know, stretching things out. So this is perfect. I'm glad I picked these up. Uh, yeah, so let me see if I can talk about the yarn a little more. Oof, I just pulled out the center pole. And I believe you can get this this yarn on the Wooly Thistle. Uh, she has, I, I, I've been, stocking her shop. She has a lot of great, she has a lot of great international yarns that you can't easily get in the States. So definitely check out her site. She has some Tuku wool. She has John Arbin. She has uh, blacker yarns. She's got a lot of stuff. So I definitely, I'm definitely planning to purchase some yarn from her shop at some point, especially, especially Tuku wool because it is absolutely gorgeous yarn to work with. So highly recommend. Um, and <laughs> You can bet your you can bet your bottom that I'm gonna pick up some more of this at EYF. So hopefully I will have this done, so you know I can wear it and it can be my EYF hat. Um, yeah, and that is living in my fringe supply bag, which is quickly gaining a lot of swag lately. <laughs> a lot, lots of new pins, uh, and this one I got for Halloween. This one I too am strange and unusual, which is a quote from Beetlejuice, one of my favorite movies growing up. Uh, and then this one, I don't know if you can, oh, it's upside down. Guys, it's a Night Court pin from Court of Thorns and Roses. It's a Night Court pin, and I'm totally blanking on where I purchased it from, but I will put it in the down bar if you guys are, hard, are diehard Akotar fans, a Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, but yeah, that is the Night Court symbol, and 
I feel like a proud member right now. Anyway, um, so yeah, what else? Yeah, I've got more stuff on the needle, so let me see. Oh yeah, I cast on, um, well, I want to knit another pair of socks for Dennis, so I told him to go stash diving. I'm very proud of him. He picked out some yarn all on his own, and this is a very interesting choice for him. I would never have guessed that he would pick something out like this, uh, but he really liked it, and this has been in my stash for a while, and yeah, so I decided to cast this on. Uh, this is uh, Jinx Yarns in her Strong Sock Base, uh, which is uh, Superwash, Mer uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon and Two Ply, and it's so soft, and so but it, it's soft yarn, but it still feels sturdy at the same time. Um, but he really liked the colorway, and he wanted a pair of socks out of these, so this is where I am. And I am having so much fun knitting these, you guys. You can tell. Um, and I will say, Dennis does not have big feet by any means. He's, he's got... he's. Like, we, I won't be totally on. He might be only an inch, his feet might only be an inch or inch and a half longer than my feet, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think that's an accurate guesstimate. Uh, however, he does like long legs, so I'm not totally off the hook <laughs> when it comes to knitting socks for him. Uh, so yeah, I got stuck knitting a seven inch leg. Uh, I think this is seven inches. I don't have my, my measuring tape. It might be seven inches or eight inches. I lost count, but... Um, Here's where I am with that. I knit the heel last night, and now it's just about the foot. And I'm not knitting these concurrently, unfortunately, so I'm just going all the way through and then casting on another sock. And I don't know if you can see this, but um, like I mentioned, I was at Do You Knit yesterday, and she was also selling Sucre Sucre, Sucre, Sucre Miniature uh, Progress Keepers, and I cannot resist. I don't know if you can see that. It's a Swiss cheese wedge. Yeah. I am in love with it because you guys, I love cheese. Cheese is my bag. I love, love, love cheese. A world without cheese is a sad thing. Cheese, chocolate, and wine, I think, would make me sad if I did not have them. <laughs> so, um, oh gosh. But yeah, I, I cannot resist getting this and yeah, it just makes me so happy. So, I don't know. She, I saw this on the site, but I didn't want to wait. I, I saw this on the Sucre Sucre Miniature site. You could buy the whole trio of cheese for, I don't know, like a package price. But I was like, man, I don't know if I want to wait that long for a cheese wedge. And then I saw it at, you know, at the unit and I just caved and, and bought it there. So, uh, yeah, and I am actually knitting this, in, this entire sock. Well, for the most part, has been knit entirely continental, ex with the exception of a couple, I want to say like a couple rows in here, because I don't know, I needed, I just needed not to focus on my knitting at the time, and I could just automatically go on autopilot with um, English knitting. Um, but you can see here a little bit, I switched back to continental, and here I kind of found my footing. Um, so you can tell I'm getting my my tension is improving and my speed is improving knitting continental However, I did go down a needle size because my gauge is slightly looser in my left hand So instead of knitting with my usual us 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter needles. I went down to a us 1 and That is 2.25 millimeter uh, And these are chow goos chow goos are the only uh, us ones that I have and Again, I will be totally honest. I'm not a fan of using Chiaogu needles for knitting socks. It's just I find the cable way too way too stiff uh, for my tastes. Um, again, not, I, I have no qualms with Chiaogus. I, I enjoy using them. They're, they have a really nice tip, but just for knitting socks, maybe because the cable is way too long. This is a relatively long cable for knitting magic sock magic loops, or <laughs> this is a pretty long cable for knitting. Um, socks magic loop and normally a, a 24 inch is about what you want when you want to knit it or you know what i like using when i knit um sock my socks magic loop because i don't have to constantly like pull the yarn all the way out and pull it all the way in so it's a shorter cable and i don't you know whatever it's more ergonomic if that makes any sense uh and this is just a little bit too floppy for me uh and stiff so I don't know. I did switch. I did have a pair of DPNs, but again, I really don't like you knitting socks DPNs. It slows me down and it's fiddly and I don't know. But yeah, I, I definitely have to invest in a pair of US1 circulars that are not Chiaogu. Maybe I'll order some Haya Haya's. I don't know because something's got to give. Um, 
yeah so anyway knitting these are uh, continental and definitely seeing some progress in my continental knitting so yay that that excites me so much you guys um and yeah the reason why am i learning how to knit continental well the main thing is to knit faster <laughs> so i would you know like especially when it comes to gift knitting i am a total selfish knitter i have no problems admitting to that i love knitting for myself nothing wrong with that uh and i do love knitting for dennis and Occasionally, I really like. I love the idea of. I love the idea of knitting for others, and I do cast things on with the intention of knitting for others. But I lose interest very quickly, uh, and I want to get to other things, especially if I know it's not for me, or I'm knitting in a colorway that I don't particularly like. Um, so yeah, it, it, like if I'm able to crank out those gifts a lot faster, then yay. But uh, <laughs> in the meantime. Uh, yeah, that, that's the main reason. Then other, you know, I would love to be able to crank out socks really fast because after the first sock, generally I'm kind of over the colorway and I want to get on to the next sock. So yeah, second sock syndrome, it, it, there are a whole bunch of factors that play into why I would like to knit Continental. Um, and just, you know, another part of it, I think, is just because, I don't know, I, I like the idea of knowing a lot of ways how to knit not just you know I don't want to say like oh this is how I knit this is how I will always knit I love learning new techniques because who knows this hand might get stressed from knitting so it would be nice to have another hand I can switch on and off with to prevent that type of thing from happening uh and just you know having just having options variety variety is the spice of life so okay let's talk stash enhancement shall we because I I've, I've been really really bad <laughs> this past week it's terrible um so as I mentioned, I ran out of yarn knitting my Damiaka Lopa pattern, uh, cardigan, and that was the, what is it, the granite, Jameson Spindrift granite colorway, and uh, there was only one website that had it, a couple, the ones that I usually go to, uh, the Wooly Thistle and uh, the Yarn Attic did not have granite, so I went over to, um, Uncommon Threads, and they are from California, they're based in California, so um, I really needed this colorway and they had it, so I ordered from them, but I'm like, you know what, while I'm, while I'm ordering this yarn, why don't I order some other uh, colorways while I'm at it, because, you know, I because I am on a colorway kick, thanks to Ellie, if you're watching, it's all your fault, I blame you, um, I decided, to, oh, and, and, and Lara of Jinx Yarns and the Dyer's Notebook, because she's like, oh yeah, I just ordered a whole bunch of colorways from Jameson, of Jameson Spindrift, because I don't know what colorways go with what, and it'd be nice to see it in person, and I'm just like, well, why, why don't I just do the same thing, because I don't know what I'm going to be knitting, um, and it'd be nice to have colors to pick and choose from, so not only did I get some, three skeins of, um, Granite. I think this is all they had left in their shop and I kind of cleaned them out, but anyway, I get to finish my cardigan. Uh, I picked up some other colorways. Um, so let's talk about, let me see. We'll do the, we'll do the purples and the reds first. So uh, these two are very similar to each other. Again, it's, it's kind of hard to tell the precise colorway of yarn online and for that I actually did go to the Jameson Spindrift website or the Jameson website to look at their colorways uh, that they have on their site and I went based on those uh, and these looked, I will admit, these looked very similar on the website themselves but um, yeah just this very light purple and this heathered purple and this one right here is wild violet and then this one right here is orchid so really nice purples this one here is purple heather so that one's really pretty and then what other ones this one did not look like it did on the website at all on both sites i imagine this one to be like a more rich dark red like a kind of like a blood red almost but uh sunset it's more of like a heathered orangey red with like blue flecks in it and again did not look anything like it did on the website but I still like it it's still an option um so yeah it's pretty and let me see let's talk about blues now uh because I did get some blues and these are very similar as well but I figured you know why not mermaid mermaid could not resist the name and I love the color uh and then this one is uh peacock 
that. And I actually did I oh man, I left those two upstairs. Um yeah, anyway, I forgot two of the stains upstairs that are I'm gonna use for Ellie's uh, Christmas mystery cal. Uh, so anyway, I'll try and post a photo of those online or somewhere, but it's a like a dark green, uh, like a dark grassy green, and then like this bright coral. Uh, but yeah, then I also got this colorway, which is burnt okra. Really pretty. Uh, and then I got this one, which is surf. So I thought this one would go really pretty with, let me see, what is it? I think this and this together would go really pretty as like a pair of colorwork mittens or a hat. Um, and then I got, this one's an interesting one. It's blue and like green tweed kind of. Uh, this one is called wood green. So I don't know, I thought it was really interesting. So I got it. And then I got Highland Mist. And then I also got charcoal because you can have, can't resist a good charcoal. Very versatile. And what else? Yeah. And then pebble. So just like a kind of warm gray, warm light gray tone. So yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, maybe a pair of mittens for my dad. I don't know. We'll see. There's that. And then uh, what else was I thinking? Yeah, like that dark green would go really good. I wish I had it with me, but it would go really well with this, just like in contrast. Um, and I'm gonna, oh, I got, yeah, I did get natural white too. So I got, I think I got like 19 skeins, crazy, I know. But again, options, options, can never have too many options. Uh, so yeah, that's my Jameson haul. And yeah, apparently I am gonna knit all the color work this winter. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe a lot of people will get some Christmas gifts. I don't know, but um, yeah, very, very pleased with my purchase. And I'm, I'm resisting cast-itis, the urge to cast on all the things right now. It's, the struggle is real. The struggle is very real. Um, but yeah, otherwise, the other thing that I got, I, as I mentioned, uh, Ellie came to New York, I believe she flew in Monday night. So we all decided uh, to meet up at DUNIT in Westfield, New Jersey. So I hopped on a train went out there and yeah when, when you one goes to do you knit um yeah it was it was really nice i have to say uh, normally whenever i go to do you knit it's either for a trunk show or the last time i went it was for uh andrea mowry's uh you know meet and greet she they had like a wine and cheese night which was really fun it was a tuesday it was during you know early afternoon and it was just such an awesome time getting to just hang out with, um, you know, I got there before Ellie and Shamika got there. So it was just Karen and Danielle hanging out. And it was really fun just to, like kick back, relax, knit a little bit, chat. And, um, you know, then of course, you know, did some shopping and uh, I cannot resist coming home with this this gorgeous combination. These two colorways are completely out of my normal comfort zone. Uh, but yeah, Hedgehog Fibers. I saw these two together and I was just like, it, it has to be something. Um, poison. I'm sorry, this is uh, Hedgehog Fibers and their Skinny Singles in the Poison colorway. And then this is Fuse Fiber Studio, uh, which is a new to me dyer. And I just saw this colorway and I just loved it. It's uh, her Prism Blue colorway and Fuse Merino Singles. So both are 100% Superwash Merino single ply yarns. And something that I, there's something I really, really love about like a really brilliant saturated pink or red with like a really light kind of like teacup blue that just goes so well together. And I'm thinking something brioche, I don't know. It's been a while since I knit brioche, but uh, yeah. This wants to be something brioche delicious or something. I don't know, but yay, there's that. And then that is all that I purchased from this, the uh, cheese, Swiss cheese uh, Sucre Sucre miniature stitch marker and the needles, the Lika needles uh, was all that I purchased from um, do you knit? But that is not, I mean, I, I did come home with more and more yarn and acquisitions because Ellie is the wonderful person that she is. Uh, you know, she meant, you know, asked me, you know, cause she was coming to Brooklyn and wanted to know if I wanted anything, any Norwegian yarn. And I was like, twist my arm, you know? And you know, she basically surprised me. Um, she said, I will find some mauve yarn for you <laughs> and totally surprised me um, with some really, really beautiful, Mauve yarn, you guys. 
she does too much. She does too much. I like literally almost cried when I saw this, but uh, she got me some Usk, which is um, Hillesvog, uh, Hillesvog yarn and it's two ply. Uh, gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I believe it's it's 100% Norsk wool and oh gosh, you guys, it is so, it is rustic, but sheepy and wooly and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I told her, you know, I'm like, if you, if you think of it and you see some Osk, I would love some Osk yarn. Um, and it's, oh gosh. Yeah. I, plans, plans. And then she also got me some Hudra, uh, yarn, which I have to Google image one of these creatures because she said it's like one of their mythical creatures. It's like a mermaid with, I, I think combined with Medusa, I don't know, and they have a tail, a cow tail, and I, it just sounds really fascinating, and I just have to remember to Google image it, but Hudra, that is the, uh, the mythical creature that this yarn is named after, and I cannot read Norwegian or speak Norwegian to save my life, but uh, I believe the colorway is called Hudra Kamgarn Mork, Mork I think is the colorway, uh, 8045. And I'm not even gonna try and read any of the language that's printed on the label because I will butcher that to no end. And this one is called Mer um, Melert Lis Rosa, I think. Yeah, but anyway, Sally, these are amazing. These are amazing. And she got me a contrasting colorway too. In black, it's black. It's a uh, fennel garn, uh, Rauma, Rauma garn, I don't know. But yes, it's, um, it's really nice contrasting color and I think these two would go really well together um, but that is not all the part that I almost cried and bawled my eyes out was when she 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 gifted me the sample mitts the sample mitts from the reindeer mitts or the yule book uh, mittens that she designed and you got it. I, I am speechless. I don't know what to say other than thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellie. I know I thanked you a million times last night, um, but they are amazing. And I, I remember on her podcast, she said that the, the wrists were a little too skinny for, um, you know, the, like this was the first incarnation of the pattern that she knit up and she knit a second pair uh, with wider mittens. And, you know, I have freakishly thin mittens, so these fit perfectly. So... I am just, I love these so much. I'm gonna knit another pair of these in a different colorway, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, thank you, Ellie, these are amazing. And uh, they will get lots of love this winter, I can tell you that. Um, so yeah, this was a totally wonderful surprise. And I have, I picked up a couple of goodies for her too at Rhinebeck, so um, I'm gonna give her those tomorrow and a whole yarn love fest. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Moving along, I'm going to talk about sewing because I've got some stuff. To, this is going to be a long episode, you guys. Um, but that's what happens when I take a week off. So sewing. I don't have, well, let me talk about what I'm wearing. This is actually a, a, a top that I sewed. Um, but before I get into that, let me talk about this pattern that I was sewing uh, that I showed you last time. This is Simplicity 8294 and I added the collar and this is just it has a Peter Pan collar if you recall I was going to sew the violet top by Colette, but decided that style the button-down style really wasn't for me um, But this is a dress that I think suits me way better and it still has that like really cute kind of Peter Pan collar effect to it so I added the collar and it has a little bit of my makeup on it when I've tried it on. And I will be totally honest, it is a little snug on me. Somebody actually mentioned that the pattern is a little wonky. I did a small bust adjustment um, and altered the pattern to bring it down to my bust size. And I actually did uh, take out the sides a little bit. Uh, so instead of having a 5 eighths of, a quarter, five eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance, I took it back down to like a quarter of an inch and definitely helps a lot. However, the the darts, the bust darts um, going up the front, I don't know if you can see that, but they are way, way too high. Um, it definitely comes, when I try it on, the darts definitely come over my, my apex, which does not look good. So I'm gonna have to redo those. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I put pins, I marked it where 
where the darts should really end. Otherwise, it's just gonna go over my bust and it just doesn't look right, uh, which I'm gonna have to do these anyway because I did, should have sewn these like button straps um, above the, the seam allowance. So anyway, it's still a work in progress. Uh, unfortunately, it's just taking a little longer and it, it is a bit of a slog of a project for me at this point, but I'm so glad that I did this as my, my first incarnation of the dress because I, di I did not want to um, cut into that Liberty fabric before having done this one. So, but yeah, and uh, here are the sleeves. I really like the sleeves on this too. Um, it has like a nice little cap sleeve. Uh, so yeah, my top that I am wearing is actually, I drafted the pattern myself. Uh, there's a shirt that I wear, I got this so long ago from H&M and it's definitely <laughs> seen better days and I but I love the shape of it so much although the the pattern is not really me it's stripey and blue and white white and blue and blue and white are not really my colors I don't know if you gather that but I still wear this you know quite frequently especially during the summer and it, it I think it's just seen its day it, I either have to donate it or chuck it I can probably donate it but yeah, I want it, but I, I love the shape of it so much. It has like a little bit of a butterfly sleeve to it. I don't know, yeah, you can see that, but I basically drafted the pattern, I traced over it. It's a very, like I looked at the construction, it's very simple, and I just basically traced the outline, added a seam allowance, and stitched it all together. Um, yeah, so this that was the top, and then this is the pattern line. So, yeah, basically I just, you know, uh, cut on fold of the fabric and uh, I didn't do a second pattern because I just kind of when I cut out cut out the second piece for the back I just kind of Did a uh, I cut a little above the the front neckline so it was pretty easy to do that and yeah This is what I came up with. I had this really cool transparent see-through burnout Jersey material that I've been trying to that I've been wanting to use for a while because I, I really love the effect of it like wearing a, a camisole underneath and then having like this sheer kind of effect and everything but yeah this is what it looks like it's I'm wearing it with my zinnia top or zinnia zinnia skirt by another pattern by Colette with pockets and I think it goes it's a nice little versatile piece and it fits really well um the only thing I would probably do differently is uh hem the sleeves a little more i might do that a little later because these are a little floppy but uh yeah i did zigzag stitch and yeah it's a basic versatile top and it has been getting a lot of wear since i made it uh over the weekend i banged it out and like between the pattern and sewing everything together it took me about an hour and a half not even so super quick um yeah i mean t-shirts i want to say are very easy to trace and construct uh yeah with that that's i mean there, I didn't have to set in, set in any sleeves, so I didn't have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, it was a very basic, very straightforward pattern piece to cut out. So very easy, very happy with the way it turned out. I'm gonna be making more. So uh, there's that. And I think that is it for sewing. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, and I did cut out some more pieces to make another lady skater dress. So hopefully I will have that to show for next week because I can never have too many lady skater skirts. And that is a pattern by Kitchi Koo and it's a jersey, it's a very simple jersey skater dress. So cap sleeves, scoop neckline, and just an A-line skirt. And I love this pattern so much. I can make I could have a whole arsenal of them and be completely happy. That That is my uniform, basically. That over a pair of leggings, call it a day. Uh, so yeah, that is it for sewing. And I am gonna move along to shop update because I'm gonna have an update uh, this Saturday. I know I on the website I said Friday, but this week is just turning out to be very eventful, um, so I'm gonna push things back just a little bit. So it will be, the update will be on Saturday, um, November 18th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let me, I didn't, I don't have, because it's still early in the week, I don't have a lot of yarn to share with you today, but let me go get what I do have. Okay, so what I do have is not a lot, I will be totally honest. So right now I only have two colorways to show you, uh, but because the holidays are nigh, uh, I will be having Christmas colorways in the shop this week. So uh, Venus Flytrap is not an official Christmas 
colorway, but yeah, now it goes along with Deck the Halls, which is my, I guess you want to say, if you want to say traditional, traditional um, holiday colorway. It's, let me see if I can get that to focus. So this is it on my Nouveau Singles base, and yeah, just a really lovely um, combination of red, green, and teal speckles. And there it is on Nouveau, and then I will also have it on Volca. So it almost has like a very vintage, um, a very vintagey kind of look to it, um, vintage holiday card feel to it, very Victoriana, if you will. So I thought that these two go really well together. Uh, so yeah, that'll be in the shop. And uh, this is my, as I mentioned, this is uh, Nouveau, my singles base, and then this is it on my Merino Nylon Cashmere base. Um, and then I will also have Venus Flytrap on both colorways on my Cocoon base, which is my Aran uh, Superwash BFL two-ply base. And then I will also have it on Nouveau as well. And then I will also have these colorways on Blitzed and Footsie. So uh, yeah, and I would sign up, like if you would like to stay um, up to date of what colorways will be in the shop for updates, uh, do sign up for my newsletter. I do my best to send out a newsletter once a week, letting you know what colorways and bases will be in the shop along with other fun stuff and uh, news events and all that, and all that jazz. So uh, yeah. Uh, I am hoping to dye some Outlander this week um, and some, hopefully, an, I want to dye a new holiday colorway up. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I haven't decided exactly what colorways I'm going to be dyeing. I kind of go with what I feel like dyeing and what people have been requesting. So Outlander has been a big one. Uh, I will have some more Dirty on Purpose. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I'm still kind of tossing around which colorways I want to dye this week, but stay on the lookout for that. And the Inner Circle Yarn Club, uh, that will be shipping out, the first installment will be shipping out uh, the week of November 20th. So I will start to dye that either this week or early next week and get those out to you as soon as I can. And I cannot believe November. We are in the middle of November. Crazy. Um, yeah, and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is next week. So yeah, I have to figure out, I think I'm going to have that update either on again on Saturday or the following Monday because uh, we are going to visit family that Thursday and staying over until Friday so it might be a little tricky doing an update but uh, if not that Saturday the following Monday will be the update so keep an eye out either subscribe to the newsletter or keep an eye on my website or Instagram feed where I keep everyone up to date on those uh, developments so yes I think that is it for shop update. We have the Half Moon Oracle knit along that is uh, currently underway. So that is a knit along, a two month knit along for my Half Moon Oracle shawl, which is a half pie version of the, the full pie Oracle shawl. Uh, and I am seeing so many wonderful projects in there. Some of you are already done uh, and posting in the FO thread. And yeah, I'm gonna be giving away prizes for that. So, uh, you know, if you are interested in knitting that, definitely uh, hop on over to the Vine Yarns Ravelry group. So there's separate groups. There's the Yarngasm Ravelry group for the podcast, and then there's the Vine Yarns uh, Ravelry group for anything related to my hand-dyed yarn business. So definitely hop over there and check it out. Uh, yes. So, all right. Wow, this is a long episode. So I am going to end it there and uh, move along to Blather, which is basically free for all where I chat about uh, what's been happening in my life. Uh, should you care to stick around? So yesterday, uh, as I mentioned, we went up, we hung out at Do You Knit and then we drove back down to the city. And of course, I feel like the whole, like all of us knitters, whenever a friend is in town from out of town, we have to take them to Eastwick. It's where we get a burrata fix because burrata, cheese, as I mentioned. So yeah, we took Ellie to get some burrata and uh, Jacqueline met up with us. Uh, yeah, and it was me, Shamika, Chanel um, was there, uh, who's Piper Nell. She has the, I believe it's called the Piper Nell podcast, but she's a really awesome uh, knitwear designer as well. She met up with us and yeah, we had a really, really nice time. Uh, and then they took off to go to Woolen for knit night. I had turned into a pumpkin by then and it was already like eight, nine o'clock and I was like, I'm so tired. So plus my train was right there and was only three stops away from where uh, my stop was. And if I had gone to Woolen, 
I don't know, I would have had to Uber it back and I really didn't feel like doing that. Thanksgiving, we are going back down to visit Dennis's brother and his family in Pennsylvania. Or they're, I think they're right outside Pennsylvania. I'm ge geographically impaired. As we usually do every year, we stay over in Philly and just kind of, cause I really like Philly. I love Philadelphia. They have a lot going on there. The food's great. Uh, they have a lot of museums and it's just kind of like a nice quick side trip for us uh, come Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, we're gonna do that and yeah, and then hopefully squeeze in a shop update. I will squeeze in a shop update at some point. The holidays, the holidays are upon us and it's crazy. I cannot believe summer is over the days they just blend together and what else have i been watching uh i've been watching outlander obviously and another series that i watched uh is called alias grace and it takes i want to say it takes place during victorian times in canada yeah it's about like this irish immigrant and she becomes like a maid servant and it's it's very it's like a, i want to call it call it like a psychological thriller I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I'd have to watch it again, but I don't know if I want to watch it again. I'm totally thinking out loud and rambling at this point, but it, it was definitely a psychological thriller with a twist at the end. And if you love historical dramas and thrillers like that, uh, you will probably appreciate this. Uh, Anna Paquin's in it and yeah, so basically this maidservant, she had been accused of murder and th this doctor, her psychologist, psychiatrist, tries to figure out if she's either guilty, innocent, or just insane. And <laughs> it's kind of, you know, you're trying to figure it out for yourself throughout the entire uh, miniseries and then the end comes and yeah, I won't say anything more than that because it is a spoiler. Um, or. It, yeah it's there, there's a there's a plot twist so anyway uh yeah definitely check it out if you're into that type of thing but yeah i'm losing my voice at this point so i'm gonna leave it there uh and thank you thank you so much again for watching and if you like this video please like and subscribe uh and if you would like to get notified anytime there's a new video or a tutorial because occasionally I do post some tutorials and vlogs and the like so uh yeah anytime you want to get notified on your phone if you would like an update as to when I upload videos, click the little bell if you're watching on YouTube, click the little bell at the bottom uh, of the screen and yeah, you will automatically be notified anytime that happens. So uh, yeah, so anyway, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. So we are at Eastwick. <laughs> East Talk. Um, but yeah, we've, we've achieved Barada status. We've yes. ordered Barada. Yeah. Um, the trio. We've got the trio. And I've got, I've got a full one here. Just, yeah, I'm greedy. Can't okay. help it. <laughs> and then we got. Hi guys. Brought up. Jacqueline met up with us.